We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? Now we're at the tip of the wing and before we tighten up the hardware for this last cross member we should think about putting the tip in, the hoop which has two turns, two 90 degree turns at each end and joins together. Let's take a look at how this forms and how we attach it. The tip will be comprised of one inch tubing that we're going to bend and it will be inserted into each spar we're looking at the inch and a half, the smaller one, the rear spar right now and it will be inserted six inches which puts it two inches past our bolt here so that's why we didn't want to tighten this up so we're gonna remove the cross member here and pull the bolt out slide this in and then of course we want to drill a hole all the way through our tip member two inches in so that we can slide this inside and reinsert the bolt and that will in effect hold it at the six inch mark. We'll later add rivets but the bolt will hold it. Now this is to go against the side wall of the tube and in fact we have a small jig that will allow that to happen as you notice here the tube will go against the outer wall of the spar so if we insert this piece into here this will help us visualize where this is going so this is what it'll look like on the one and a half inch spar with our tip tube all the way to the outside wall and of course this bolt back here is not really going to affix or hold the tube against the wall it will simply keep it from coming in or out and give it strength we will have rivets along the outer wall that will hold the tube let's look at the front spar and at the front spar we have the same thing we will remove the bolt our tip tube will go six inches in and the spacer helps show how it will be positioned against the outer wall and the bolt going through a hole in it and then we'll add rivets along this edge. And this jig, this fixture, is part of the kit available uh, by a link on Patreon. Now, according to the plans, the tip two needs to come out 21 inches measuring from the six inch overlap with the spar to the outside edge of where it turns and goes towards the other spar so we need to make a bend that has a 21 inch stub on it let's get our bender so we need a 21 inch stub a 90 degree bend Here's the 21 inch mark and of course we remember we deduct 8 inches which brings us up to 13. So this is where we'll put the mark of the bender and then bend this up to 90 degrees. And this came out to 21 inches from here to here. So our goal is to insert this up to the 6 inch mark, measure 6 inches over and put a mark on here we'll slide it in of course we need to take out this bolt and before I do that I'm simply going to mark two inches in and while having this flat mark a hole two inches in that goes all the way through a 
quarter inch hole for this bolt. I'm going to use my line jig to make sure I get it perpendicular to this flat plane on this side and back on this side so that I can drill my hole straight through. So two inches in on this line, all the way through. Same with the other side. Drill a hole there, connect the two holes. Quarter inch. Here we have the tube inserted. The spacer is simply holding the tube in the correct position. We have the bolt passing through because we made the hole inside of here. Now obviously this bolt is not holding this, it's just allowing it to pass through. We're going to mark one, two, three, four rivets inch apart and drill these through. These will be eighth inch stainless steel rivets. These rivets will hold the tube tight against the wall of this tube. I'll clico for now, but those will be the rivets that hold this in place. Now the spacer will be removed when we're done constructing this. I'm not going to drill these rivet locations out yet because we want to finish the loop so we can still maintain some rotation and movement until we get the entire wing tip loop done but this is where the rivets will go. Let's now work at the other spar. Now if I had a long enough piece I'd be able to make another bend and finish. Because I ran out of 10 foot long pieces, this is a 6 foot that I'm using and that is not long enough. I'm going to make another bend and then splice somewhere where they cross. That'll be easier for getting a good fit and more manageable using two pieces at the expense of having to create a splice. You can do it either way with one continuous tube as long as you're confident making your tube bends in the proper locations or what I think is easier if you don't mind the splice using the two piece method. So let's go up to our two inch spar and the process is going to be absolutely identical to what we just did, just making a bend in the other direction and attaching to a larger diameter spar. So I made another 90 degree bend with the 21 inches from one end to the other, from over here, and uh, got my hole two inches in all the way through and we're going to use our jig for the two inch spar slip that over the end and this will go inside here and we need to hook up the bolt and this will hold this tight again we're going to rivet along here and then let me change the camera angle our two pieces overlap and I will hold everything in its final position and then mark and we'll put a splice in here before final drilling 
mark and drill eighth inch holes at all the rivet locations and then try and knock the burrs off inside by scraping with the tube. We'll do this for the two inch spar on the other side and then we can fit everything together to drill these holes. Now I have inserted the tube and got everything lined up the best I can. And also make sure you have this level not cocked one way or the other. And you can go ahead and drill the four rivet holes on each side and Clico as you go. And then we can pull this off one last time. To be able to remove our jigs and deburr. And after removing our jigs, we can deburr and then reassemble for the final time. Inserting our bolts. And here's the wing tip completed. Four rivets in the bolt. Now we can install our permanent hardware and tighten this down and then reinsert the tube that goes across to the other side. And the splice. Once in a while, people may want you to move your workbench, get it out of the way because something else, because it is 16 feet long after all. Well, if you built one of the original workbenches that we showed in part one, look how easy it is to move it and get it out of the way and move it to another area. We simply lift it up, get one or two people at the other end, lift it up and put it on a rolling cart. It will balance if you place it at the center, at the eight foot mark, and then pull out the sawhorses. Get them out of the way, and now we can move this somewhere where it won't be bothering anyone. My cart is on wheels, and we can just roll this along. Okay, you you got to move. at the other end of the shop I notice I'm getting some natural lighting in here so maybe this will be a plus when it comes to displaying some parts and procedures and it is starting to get a uh, chill in the air one way you can tell is when you see people breaking out this stuff that's a sure sign some of us just live a little too far north for our own good but anyhow Now's the time to get back to building, even on your portable rolling workbench. Now, in addition to the tip of the wing, we still have left the ribs. We need to form them and attach them. And the ailerons, those need to be hinged up to the back of the wing, so to speak. And then also very important are 
where the struts attach to the wing. There are some fittings that we have to custom manufacture. None of them any problem, just one step at a time. Now it's getting a little chilly in certain parts of the country, so it's best that we sooner than later get back to building and we'll see you next time.